uh, me and Michael um, have a one episode podcast where we watch history movies. <laughs> oh, that's tight! I love that. And we, yeah, we watch three hundred. So maybe we can get oh that going God, in this quarantine. Three hundred is my problematic fave. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to rewatch it. <laughs> that movie is so gay. It's, it's extremely gay, gay. yeah. Gay no. All right, we'll, we, we'll do that. That one's going in the books. <laughs> Great, good. I'm glad we just we're just gonna make constant podcasts for an audience of like three people. <laughs> I love it. Hey, I love it. <laughs> my brother, my brother's friend, and me. got a little outline uh that might be useful to you guys uh that i will drop in the chat uh but i'll set up the premise of this this recording which is um basically we're all stuck in covid19 quarantine um and i saw a couple days ago that um that god's not dead which is a like semi uh infamous religious movie uh is on is on netflix apparently also the sequel is on netflix which i won't ask you guys to watch but i might dip into later on uh because i'm a glutton for punishment uh, oh, oh oh my god so do you guys want to just like uh introduce yourselves real briefly and talk about your religious upbringings uh so that way we can give some context to the five people who will see this <laughs> yeah so if me and michael it's going to be fairly similar because we're siblings and we grew up in a very Southern Baptist environment. Uh, so very fire and brimstone. I think we should be clear. It's uh, not just Southern Baptist. It, it is an offshoot of Southern Baptist that left the convention because they were too progressive. Yeah, <laughs> Southern Baptists were too progressive. Free yeah. will. Free will. Southern yeah. Baptist. That's important. Oh, yeah. Not that yeah. they're hippies. <laughs> Nope. This movie was a little too uh, liberal for. Uh, <laughs> That's the really pe- upsetting. <laughs> the people we um, grew up next to. That's yeah. yeah that's truly <laughs> disturbing. Um, for for your guys' edification, so I am. Um, I would consider myself an atheist formally, but I I used to be uh, a Catholic. I went to a Catholic high school. And I mean, I, I I went through every, um, not every sacrament, but all the all the major ones. That that is the the lens through which I view a lot of uh, religious media is through the lens of Catholicism. So, and, as you guys pointed out, this is a more like evangelical, like more Protestant sort of outlook. Um, and that's that's why I think you guys are going to have a good good insight on like this movie, um, and it's and it's what it's saying, um. And the first thing I should I should say straight up that I texted you guys this film made sixty five million dollars so like it's not a flop it got a thirteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes but it was not a flop by any means like it was extremely profitable to someone. Do you guys remember when this movie came out? Like, cause I, I do. I saw it in theaters with Sierra. <laughs> this is I the third remember. time I've seen this film. <laughs> I don't the know. Third time. Yeah. The second time was with my uh, Muslim roommate, so <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get into some shit. <laughs> Did they convert? Yeah. <laughs> no, he was he was disappointed. Uh, really? No. I wonder why. Yeah. I, I found myself so angry at the parts I shouldn't have been <laughs> during this entire film experience. Okay, what does that mean? It means <laughs> that I am a college student. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I experienced college, I used to, in the golden ages of interacting with humans. Yeah. Um, I just, all of their backpacks were so clearly empty, and I know that's a trope in every movie. I know it is. <laughs> it just bugged me so much. I mean, there's definitely those students. Um, my favorite one in that opening shot was, like, the guy, the the Professor Radisson, who is um, played by Kevin Sorbo. He's, like, the main antagonist in this film. He's like, hey, kids, you know, if, if you're going to want to, you know, keep up in this class, this is a university-level class, and I want you to produce university-level work. And there's this one kid with, like, with like a, a baseball cap. He's like, bye, and he just leaves. And, like, he's my favorite character in this film. Yeah. <laughs> So I took notes, and he was the first note that I actually made. 
So I've never, I've never been to college, but like, is it a thing that you just like get up and leave if you don't feel it? Like, I love that for him. No, if they had actually ever spent any time in a college room, it would have been from Josh's perspective and he would have watched someone drop out of the class online. Because that's what we all do, and then you politely sit through the class. <laughs> oh my god. Also, that dude, again, shouldn't bug me, but did, had the college logo on his shirt and his hat. <laughs> yeah, no, he was like real school spirity <laughs> up until the point where he had to do work, and he's like, bye. <laughs> I mean, he's paying a lot of money, right? Like, we should oh, yeah, assume no. someone is. A terrible, terrible amount of money to be at that school, which I assume is in Florida because um, the pastors were driving to Disneyland. I don't actually know where the school's supposed to be, but I can't oh imagine. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, I don't know where, where they are. Is this, where is the setting of this? <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I I don't want to dive into the extended universe, but like they, we assume that they live with some within driving distance of Orlando because it's set up that the pastors want to go to Disney uh, Land. I believe it could be in California, but I doubt it. I don't think it's legal for them to film this uh, any evangelical film in California. Um, <laughs> they will be shot on spot. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> they will be forced to, to, to step on the cross. Yeah, no, like the movie. They'll silent. be forced to write "God is dead" on a, a poster. <laughs> yeah. It's freaking That's medieval what Japan. You fly to California. It's really weird. I hate it when they do that. It makes me really uncomfortable. You, you know, know I went for the first time this uh, this winter, and I had to like, you know, you were given a sign and a sharpie when you were about to descend, and they were like, you need to write in all caps, "God is dead," and raise it up and cheer, "God is dead" when you land. It was really odd. You're also supposed to, if you are straight and married, you have to get a divorce and then marry someone of the same sex. It's quite strange. <laughs> Uh, California. Okay, so again, things that shouldn't bug me but really did. So when he's having all the students write the God is dead thing, we see a kid have like a very fancy signature. Mm-hmm. But then when he's looking through the notes, they're all, all of the signatures are in print. Yeah. <laughs> so that we, the reader, <laughs> could know who, because we have such an emotional attachment to these, these rambunctious youths. <laughs> They don't, like, introduce, like, half the characters until maybe a three-third-fourth of the way through the film. Like, Okay, I have a comparison that I have to make that this film struck me. So you guys know all of those, like, late 2000s, early 2010s rom-coms that were all based <laughs> oh my, yes. on holidays? Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve. <laughs> yes. um, and don't forget Mother's Day. You okay, can't forget, forget about Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. I'm like, no, you're exactly right. Where there's like a, a sprawling cast of characters, and you're going through each one and watching their individual lives, and somehow they're all connected. It's exactly the same plot structure. Yep. Oh my I'm god, so this so was love actually. Like they're also not connected at all. Completely unrelated. <laughs> like, the, um, so like the uh, the the reporter lady, her boyfriend, her brother, her yeah, she's the brother of Radisson's girlfriend. And then, yep. like, it's all somehow connected and, like, uh, but it's also, like, no, they never interact. There's never, like, a weird moment, like, oh, that's how they know each other. Because they don't, they don't invest in their characters at all. They, no. I mean, they, don't, they don't say the, re- the liberal reporter girl's name, which I guess is Amy, until right where the point where she's like, hey, rich boyfriend, whose name I guess is Mark, um, I have cancer. And he's like, oh, that is unfortunate for me. <laughs> uh, I think the first person who says her name might be the doctor getting her attention really far in her arc. I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's the point where he's like, Amy, hey, pay attention. You have cancer. And it's like, oh, okay. And, um, yeah, so it's a good time. So, I don't I know. Do we- <laughs> I, I, I need to push this point. I'm so sorry, Erin. Because she had um, movie cancer, which was, uh, it's cancer. What kind? Ba, ba, da, da. <laughs> you know, it's just that general cancer that metastasizes throughout your body. So, you know, it, it could be it could be nothing, it could be anything, but it's definitely going to kill her. I mean, there's that part in the blog where she's like, Amy is going to die. And that was like, holy shit, lady. <laughs> but it's also the same issue that they have with uh, Christianity, where it's like, I'm a Christian. What kind? That doesn't matter. <laughs> That's irrelevant. <laughs> Completely, completely, oh, good. And as we've shown through our beginning discussion, 
uh, where Catholicism and Free Will Southern Baptist exactly yeah. the same. Exactly yeah, no, the completely, same. Basically the same religion. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, we start with um, this this freshman in college, Josh uh, Hutt, Josh. No, it's Josh. Wheaton, which is the same, not the same as Joss Whedon, which is why I initially got interested. I was like, why is Joss Whedon in this movie? Um, but no, he's a, he's a, a Josh Wheaton. Um, and he's signing up for like his first day of like college classes. And, um, this, uh, the, the guy in the college, like who's helping him sign up is like, oh, you shouldn't take philosophy 110. It's like being in the Coliseum if you're like a, a Christian. And, and Josh is like, oh, that'll mess up my schedule. And the guy's like, all right, idiot, bye. And, uh, <laughs> So we get to this, we get to that scene we were talking about earlier where he goes into the class and this professor, Professor Radisson, is like listing off all these philosophers and he's like, the main thing that they all have in common is that they're atheists. And because they're all atheists and I don't want to do, teach this section of philosophy, I need you all to not even sign out a waiver. It's not like a, a waiver that like, I guess he, that he would submit to like his dean or you know, like, the first, like, somebody to approve the academic, like, the curriculum jump. Like, he's like, no, I need you, the individual students in this class, to write on a piece of paper, God is dead, and sign your name on it. Um, because that's a totally normal thing that happens in colleges. Um, Philosophy, famously. Go ahead, Michael. It definitely wouldn't lead to, like, a lawsuit or this person being fired or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean... Just like extreme blatant religious discrimination and, uh, and it's totally cool and everyone, like as, as you see it throughout the film, everyone in the film is like a, a huge douchebag atheist and, um, we love that for our academia because that is, as we know, um, what all colleges are like. They're just full of atheists that want to persecute Christians. Um, I also found it fascinating that uh, it was, uh, you know, philosophy, famously the, uh, the course of direct and simple answers <laughs> yeah exactly no philosophers love to say like this is this is one thing and there's nothing else we need to talk about there's nothing else we need to dig into it's just like hey god is dead and i didn't write a whole book about you know the rest of that shit and the thing that bugs me about this is that it claims to be like a movie about philosophy but nietzsche is like baby's first philosopher like no one like no one who's actually ever studied philosophy and i'm a garbage like i don't know dick about philosophy but like, I know for a fact that Nietzsche is the one that you, you learn about when you're 13, and you're like, oh, this is really cool. And then, like, when you go to college and have to take that gen ed, you're like, oh, he's, he's probably a eugenicist. And, like, there are so many other ways to think about this, just besides that really dope line that he had. Um, and it's, it's just like, it's such a shallow view of, of philosophy and, and the way that, the, it just divides the world into um, Christians and non-Christians, and all the non-Christians are the worst caricatures of human beings you could possibly imagine. And I'm so happy to see all of Christendom united under one belief system. <laughs> also, for the record, all of the students are like sheeple. They all just like follow in the direction of whomever the leader is. They just are all wandering aimlessly. I mean, exactly. Like, at the beginning, they're all like, oh, yeah, God's dead. Uh, fine. Sure. Whatever, whatever, dude. It's the first day of class. You haven't even set, talked about the syllabus yet. But, yeah, God's dead. I'll make that cool. statement. Cool, God's dead. Um, <laughs> and then at the end, then, they're like, oh, my yeah. captain, my captain. <laughs> exactly. They do that Robin Williams shit where they're all like, God's. God is alive, and in my heart, after these, after a cumulative total of not, of a sixty minutes of some white dude in my freshman philosophy class defending him with these cool powerpoints, um, he did have. Listen, we we poked a lot of fun. They were kind of dope powerpoints. They were incredible. I've never worked that hard on any sort of powerpoint presentation in my academic career. He did. He made movies and shit. Like, uh, there is zoomed in you know and out. I agree with the librarian. He's got to get a life. Oh, my God, the librarian. Oh, she, she just, like, looked at him, and she's like, dude, what are you doing? Please. She's I, my hero. She's so great. I do feel that we have made a, a injustice to this movie that we have not brought up the newsboys. Oh, my God. <laughs> we have to get to the newsboys. Okay. Well, no, because um, it opens with, like, a music video. True. Like. It's a two hour long movie. It opens and ends with the music song. video. Yeah, it rules. Um, okay, we'll, we'll get, so, um, let me see. I don't, I don't remember exactly what happens, but basically Josh's girlfriend, 
Um, like they're, they're talking and she's like, Josh, I came to this third rate school. So that way we could like be together for whatever reason. Um, and you, you can't fuck this up. You can't be a lawyer if you get a C in, in a freshman year, um, philosophy course. That'll, law schools will never accept that. There's no such thing as a lawyer who's got a C. Uh, um, so that's cool. Um, and she, I, she sucks really bad too. Um, and like, cause they're talking about, she's like, oh, it's our six year anniversary, which by my math means that they started dating when they were 12, which is, it's a choice. Very or whatever. You know? Yeah, I, mean, I, I was about I, to say, that's about, about, yeah, maybe, maybe that's accurate. Maybe it's, you meet when you're 12 okay. and you date for the rest of your life. But the inaccurate part of this is she is one hundo pregnant. As someone oh, who has been around this for a very long time, the, the odds of her being pregnant are damn near a hundred. Uh, yeah, that is the thing. It does sort of shy away from the more realistic <laughs> portrayals of how what evangelical relationships look like. Um, and I, in fact, I think that throughout this film, a lot of the you, you get a lot of um, like what's the word projection. Um, of what, you know, the way that they treat the minorities um, in this film. It's like, specifically the, the Muslim woman. We'll get there. Um, but There's so much to say. You know you're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me pull up a plot summary because it is so... Uh, it's, it's so, so convoluted. Specific. There's a lot. Yeah. Uh, well, it's because it, it's got like 15 plot points yeah. that are woven together in the least fun way imaginable. I, there was a point that I do want to address, and that was um, Amy's, or I feel like we should just call her, like, cancer atheist, because I swear that's what they had in this I mean, ba- I mean, basically, like, evil liberal reporter. Um, and her <laughs> bumper stickers were, meat is murder, <laughs> and evolution. <laughs> I mean, yeah, listen, okay, They're, the bumper stickers were bad, but we all know those people. Like, we all know the, yes. the, the liberal person who has a thousand bumper stickers on their car. So it's like, you're not wrong. But you gotta you're, stick you're wrong. <laughs> she voted for Jill Stein. We know it. I just had yeah, to say it. Yeah. <laughs> if it was accurate, she would have had a coexist sticker on yeah. there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Okay. But, and also, I have to bring up, Erin, you made this note. And it's just been a resounding story, I think, in this film, is that... Women exist to separate God and man, and it is the <laughs> biblical misogyny <laughs> that this yeah. film exemplifies is oh, rich. It's so good. It is so rich. Um, because basically, there basically all the women exist that are in this film exist to do is either um, get saved by a white person or like try to separate them from from Jesus. Um, we, we yes. have, we have Kara who's like, you just, should, you should just deny God because we're both Christians, but you should just deny God. Um, God would want you to be with me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, literally she says that and it's like, yeah, I don't know that, that years of being raised in a, in a religious setting would lead you to that conclusion, but all right, sure. Um, I mean, it might, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's why we're all here. Uh, <laughs> And then there's, um, I mean, there's the, there's the liberal reporter, um, who, you know, she, she goes through what the film can, I mean, portrays atheists as, as some, as somebody who is, you know, upset and only in it for themselves until, until they, they actually learn about, uh, Jesus. And then, and then they, they have a transformation. And, um, and then there's, of course, um, Aisha, who is, um, a Muslim woman who, um, gets, who converts to Christianity and then is, uh, you know, uh, beaten by her father and kicked out of her house uh, because he's a Muslim. And that's what all Muslims are like, right? Um, you have an it, important note, Aaron. The, the note that you have that we, we need to address is that they just should have put, like, angry Arabic. That should have been the subtitle because I mean, they just yeah. didn't care. Yeah, no, they're just like, oh, he's speaking, he's speaking Muslim language. That means he's bad. <laughs> You know, and it was, really is such a direct characterization, too, because later in the film, they show two characters going back and forth between Mandarin and Cantonese, and they say both and provide translations for both. Yep. So not only do are they capable, like, they do it in two different language si- languages simultaneously. Yeah, <laughs> they just, they can, they just don't. They're just like, hey... <laughs> 
this brown man, you don't need to know what he says. You just need to know that he's a foreigner. Uh, yeah. And you hate him. But and his um, son is a cop. I'm sorry. That child is a fucking cop. I I love that in the writing process they were like, "Hey, why should we make him go in his in her room? Maybe he forgot something, or like maybe he hears a noise. No, he's just gonna creepily open the door and attack her and grab her phone because he's listening to Franklin Graham. Yeah, no, it's wild. That's what all young women are into is listening to recorded lectures from like. An extremely old Christian man. The That's Lesnar of the Graham. Yeah, not even <laughs> William. Like, I was like, wait, who is Frank Graham? I know Billy. <laughs> Excuse He's me. He's the off brand Graham. Yeah. He's um, like, <laughs> he's like a lesser Baldwin twin. Like, yeah. this is ridiculous. <laughs> It's great. Um, so at, at some point in this film, right, we get we get to angry girlfriend uh, who is the reporter and she goes and ambushes uh, the, the Ducks Dynasty crew. And I want I want I don't know how much ex- exposure you guys have to Duck Dynasty, but I think I just think the interview is funny. extremely funny <laughs> because she's just like, hey, why do you kill ducks? And they're like, <laughs> we <laughs> we like to kill because it's fun and we love to eat them. Like, what are you talking about? They're delicious. <laughs> They're delicious. Feel, is that really his wife? I feel like I think I've had so. amnesia. So, yeah. Oh, my God. All of their wives look identical. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, they're they're great. Those two, per, I mean, they bring up a point. They're like, she's like, well, she has this great quote, which is like, um, you've made a fortune selling devices that are designed to lure waterfowl to their death. Yeah. <laughs> Like waterfowl, is that is that noun you want to go with professional reporter? Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you know what ducks are? That is she the, had a minimum <laughs> character limit. Yeah, no, she just has to hit it to get all those angry atheist clicks. And, this um, is the same reporter that, while doing her her uh, groundbreaking research, had Wikipedia up. <laughs> So Will, Willie, Willie, what's his name? Robertson and Corey, their net worth is roughly 10 million. So when, when she says that, when they're like, oh, you know, we're doing all right for him. So I was like, I mean, you are millionaires. Like, yeah. yeah. And that's so have they given yeah, all of that away? Like, that's the thing, right? Like, if I were the reporter, I'd be like, so how much of this have you given away to charity? Right? Because Jesus calls on you to give up your wealth and follow me. How many right. camels have you made it through the eye of the needle? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the Duncan can- <laughs> camel. This is camel. I have a needle for you. If you just want to squeeze right in. Oh, no. I've got um, time. Take your time. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> We've got eternity. Well, there's We've also this thing where I, this is, this might be too, too serious for us just dunking on this movie, but it, it, they brought up a really interesting point of him going, oh, we're not trying to offend anybody by being Christians. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but one of those Duck Dynasty people said some really homophobic stuff. Yeah. And then they hid behind their Christianity to be mm-hmm. like, well, those are just my good Christian values. And you can't, no one's mad about that part. <laughs> yeah, hey man, no one cares about you going to church. Like that's, that's another part of this that I wanted to discuss is that this movie is like the persecution complex of Christians, like, but, but on a high budget or not a high, a high budget, but it is, it is made for the big screen, right? It is, it is the showcasing of the, the Christian mindset that like everyone is, li- literally everyone is out to get them except for other Christians. And the only things you can do are, um, try to convert them or just, you know, insulate yourself. Um, and that's, that's where we're getting like, right? It, like when he's saying, oh, we're not trying to offend anyone. And it's like, yeah, that's not really what we're, we're not offended by by the Christian part. We we don't like the part where you buy off politicians to restrict our our rights. That one does suck a little bit. Exactly. And it's, it's less offensive and more like, um, I, I wish you wouldn't do that. I wish you would make it so I, I didn't have to fight to survive. Um, and as someone who goes to one of, again, might be too deep. Uh, we'll see if Aaron leaves this part into the uh, actual podcast. Uh, where, like... As someone who goes to one of these hippy dippy universities, I've never had an atheist yell at me to leave my religion. I've had plenty of Christians yell at me that I'm going to hell. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You um, have. Hello. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm Hold a on. white straight man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a history major. They should love me. Yeah. I mean, you're exactly in in the Venn diagram of white people who go to college. Yeah. Um, I could be the main character. 
Your name is literally Josh, so... I, I, yeah. I could just be him. Yeah. Okay, but doesn't Josh look like he always has, like, like a cartoon playing in his head, like, with music? Like, it just, it's vacant. There's not an original not thought in that head. Behind the eyes, yeah. His <laughs> face <laughs> looks like the sound a penny makes dropping into an empty bowl. Oh. <laughs> Um, I have to point out, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but we've mentioned it, that he and his girlfriend have been together for six years, and she has to remind him, like, what day of the week it is. He's like, I don't turn on my phone. Like, this is some sort of, like, you know, brownie points for that. And, like, yeah. if you're together for six years and you can't remember your anniversary, like, straight men have no standard. <laughs> there is no standard. She's like, yay, you remembered. You remembered how we met because our youth groups overlapped. And I'm like, you've been together for six fucking years. I hope you remember how we met. Are you the one with Alzheimer's? <laughs> to be honest, he might not have remembered. It might have just been a really easy guess. <laughs> Michael, that's not fair because he does get her tickets to a Newsboys concert. True, true. <laughs> and so, his boyfriend go to at the end. Uh, yeah, him, oh yeah. god, this movie also is a huge white savior complex, which I love. Um, it, I mean, we get Josh who is saving not only uh, a Chinese man, but also, um, um, a Muslim woman, uh, and also presumably the 80 students in his class who converted to Christianity, uh, because of, because of his grave defense. Um, did you guys notice, like, I feel like I could t- do an entire podcast of the look, the ex-Muslim girl, gave to Josh at the end of the movie. Just yeah, that. no. <laughs> yeah, no. I did I did actually do my uh college like I undergrad thesis on volunteerism. Um so like I mean we're about halfway yeah. there with with that look alone. She's like, "Wow, this this brave white man who stood up and quoted CS Lewis in the cafeteria to his girlfriend. That I want to fuck that guy." Uh, but after we're married. <laughs> but after we're married yeah. by Franklin Graham. <laughs> in two weeks, because that's how evangelical engagements are. You're engaged for two weeks, you get married. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, date for six years. <laughs> you date for six years, and as soon as you t- turn 18, you're shopping for rings. I was yep. enjoying this movie's stance on uh, no blondes. I was enjoying that. <laughs> that viewpoint. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty fair. Except for Willie's uh, wife. Basically, every b- blonde in the movie is like a Satanist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah brunettes only, and I'm here for it. <laughs> this <laughs> blonde erasure. Yeah, it's a choice, certainly. <laughs> um, Just I mean, it. The, the problem this movie has, and I, I think the problem that this whole cinematic universe has is that basically everyone who's not a Christian is like either inherently evil or is about, is like on the verge of converting to Christianity. And, um, the only thing that they need is like one young white man to, to stand up for them. Like, I mean the, the boyfriend, right? The, the reporter's boyfriend is like such a huge piece of shit. Like he, he's like, like, like she's like wants to talk about her day. Cause like her car bro- got broken into and like, she needs directions to this, this church or whatever. And he's like, well, what's in it for me? And like, that's sort of the, the way that they play off his character is like completely self-interested. Well, and his intro, he's literally being racist. His intro is yeah. saying Japanese don't care about insider trading. I yeah. had to write that down because I didn't believe what I was hearing. Yeah, I also no. did uh, <laughs> quickly check the rating when he said, what's in it for me? Because I was like, what's she going to say? <laughs> oh, is it, is it one of those movies? I mean, I mean, their, their mom, his mom, who has Alzheimer's, is Doug, when she's talking to his sister, she's like, oh, you don't have a ring. And then she's like, well, it's complicated. It's like, hey, mom with Alzheimer's, could you be cool for a second? Me too. Also, no, that I, is so accurate for evangelical okay, well, there you go. people. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I have, it's been brought up by my family members why I don't have a ring. <laughs> You're like 21. <laughs> I am 21. Yeah. I, I, I'm over the hill. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's a lot. There's a lot of problems with the also, way. <laughs> they fed that old lady so slow. I know I shouldn't care, but like it was such small bites. Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta be careful. Dysphagia is a real thing that affects our our elderly popula- population, so we gotta make sure that we get them got get nice slow small bites. Uh, we don't want them choking on anything. And you guys didn't think you'd learn something medical while listening to a podcast about uh, <laughs> three good old Christian boys. 
Okay, another medical thing I did want to bring up with that. Um, okay, there's actually two. So, firstly, there's, um, I mean, there's the fact that, like, I hate narratives where it's like, um, oh, this person can't remember anything. And then all of a sudden, in a moment of clarity, they say a thing that's important to the plot. So, like, like at the end of the movie where he's, like, where he goes and visits his, his mom after, like, not, re- like, refusing to visit her for forever, she, like, says something about how, like, the devil wants to keep you in a golden cage so that way, you know, you never want to leave. And he's like, wait, what? And then mom's like, who are you? And I hate that shit so much, not only because it's the corniest dog shit writing, but also because, like, uh, I, I, you know, I used to be a hospital RN. I, I now work at a school. Um, but, like, when I worked in a hospital, I worked on, like, a unit with people with a lot of, I mean, basically, if you work at, in any hospital, you're going to get people with, with dementia and, and Alzheimer's. And that's not how it, that's not how it works. <laughs> It is a very difficult disease to have to deal with, and it shouldn't be trivialized to the point like, oh, maybe they'll have a miraculous breakthrough, and they'll be able to get an important message through to their child. Like, no, sometimes they're just, like, incredibly lonely and sad, and they don't know why, and sometimes they they get aggressive, and, like, I've been punched by more old ladies than anyone else in my life, Um, (laughs) because it's a a difficult disease to have to deal with. Yeah, Um, and and it's it's real. It is a real thing. And they're, unlike they're Christian using, persecution. <laughs> unlike Christian persecution, which doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, the second well, it, thing, and my, I, my, my favorite thing so in this excited. film, is when, um, so at the end of the, spoiler alert, okay, um, Professor Radisson loses his debate. He, he realizes that he, he doesn't, he doesn't not believe in God. He hates God, which is, which is different. And that's the, the gotcha moment. So he goes to try to go to this concert to, you know, make up with his girlfriend, which he was a huge douche to. Uh, she broke up with him. Uh, he gets hit by a car, which I think is the the asshole boyfriend, right? The the businessman's car. I don't know if that's 100% true, but that's huh. my headcanon. Uh, I, I feel, feel like, like it's it, got to be. There yeah. are no, like, side characters in yeah, there. There's, yeah, no, everyone's connected. There's no coincidences. It was no. that or the uh, exchange student's dad. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's like he, he drove here because he was so mad and he just smashed Professor Radisson on the way. I thought for a split second it was going to be the pastor. Like, I thought... Yeah, no, there was no way, no, like, maybe. Maybe it'll be super rad. Um, no, but, like, so there's the point where they're like, oh, no, his lung, his ribs are crushed, his lungs are filling with blood, and he's clearly fine. He's clearly on the ground just like, ow. And they're like, oh, no, we've got to put him out of his misery right now. <laughs> like, well, and I was like, when did you guys go to medical school? Like, he's like, oh, yeah, his lungs are crushed. What can we say? They're filling with blood right in front of us. The oh, no. first reaction is to put hand on ribs. <laughs> just like, yeah. Oh, let me just jam that fragment in. The- oh, I heard a pop. You're fine. Anyway, also, Netflix sucks. Netflix sucks. It spoils this when yeah, you the- pull the movie up. It shows that dude in the air, like, <laughs> free-falling. The slow-mo telenovela style yeah, no, soap the opera. <laughs> the only way it could have been more dramatic is if he then was, like, slowly impaled by, like, <laughs> the papers that said God is dead. Yeah. But then the blood, like, erased the word, uh, dead. Yeah, and God is covered in blood, like, oh, that would be such a good dynamic. Um, or he died, like, with his arms. Yeah, like, the of Christ post, yeah. That would be tight. So, with the whole giving, I, I kind of renamed this movie, and I sent this to both of you because I laughed at my own joke here (laughs) and i think that the last scene of the professor and this whole moment is best summed up with last rites protestant edition because (laughs) he's just giving him last rites that's all that's happening and afterwards his friend is like you know what we should celebrate this was awesome actually we saw a man get killed on the street and it ruled <laughs> this was the coolest thing i've seen all day fuck disney we're going to dinner i do love how much power they give to god as just a shitty mechanic <laughs> you know god's like no i don't think this car's gonna start idiot <laughs> why so you can watch a man die you can so you can help a poor a poor Muslim woman, and you can watch a man be killed in the street in front of you. Uh, <laughs> Why? Because um, I'm God. <laughs> I'm God, and that's my ways are not your ways, dum dum. Just just deal with it. Again, I know this movie is not interested in addressing the very complicated relationship between Islam and Christianity, um, but boy, did it bug me that like they 
like, Muslims don't not believe in Jesus. Like, they no, don't believe they, in a, <laughs> the same style. Like, they, yeah, they don't believe Jesus is God, but they do believe that he was, like, an existent person and, like, was important in in theology. <laughs> like, yeah, like, he was a very important person to the part of the religion. Yeah, so... So it's, um, it's very strange, the, the anger. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was watching this film with my Muslim roommate, and when, when we were, I think, freshmen in college, maybe sophomores, maybe it was our sophomore year, um, and I was like, hey, man, do you want to watch this wild movie? <laughs> And he's like, I guess we're in college. What else do you do? And we watched it. And he was like, okay, like with the first half of this movie. So we, he's like, okay, I get it. Like, because the way that they portray the father is like pretty sympathetic. He's like, listen, I know you don't like wearing this thing, but, um, you know, it, I want you to, you know, be, remember who your, what your faith is. And like, I know it's hard to be apart from them, but you know, I, I want you to know that I love you. Um, and, and, and my, my, my roommate, he was like, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, it, it's not a perfect message, but like it, it's it's not wrong right there's there's a big there is a, a discussion to be had about the way that you know people of different religions interact and, and how it is you know especially when you have to wear a symbol of your religion it can it can be alienating uh, but that's not what this movie is interested in because as soon as, as the father figures out that she is a christian he like hits her extremely hard and like drags her out and throws her into the street um and and then like i was apparently sad about it and it's like <laughs> It's such a gross, terrible the, the stereotype of like, oh, Muslims are intolerant and Muslim Muslims hate when when en- you're not you're anything but Muslim. And I mean, it is it is so like it's so truly deeply upsetting to to watch you know a, a film in which that stereotype is portrayed. And and like I, like I was saying earlier, I think it is uh you know me thinks he doth protest too much because it there are a hundred different stories of people who are not being who are who are not straight folks getting thrown out. Um, because their their Christian families can't don't accept them, and it and it sucks so bad. Well, and it really does take that parallel, right? Like in my notes, I kept putting like she's a closet Christian. Like they're literally so heavy handed with this comparison, mm-hmm. and it's like this doesn't happen to Christian kids. This happens to fellow queer kids. Like yes, exactly. That's well, who this is happening to. I found something very interesting. Not the um, we'll call it obvious racism and xenophobia the um the interesting racism and xenophobia which was the that's what uh, i like <laughs> that's where i want to dig into that that meat right there which was um her brother knowing enough about christianity to know the name um I oh, forgot which Franklin, brand it was. Franklin. Franklin. No, yeah he, he steals her ipod shuffle i guess <laughs> and he's like Oh, no, Franklin Graham. (laughs) And by the way, as someone who was raised in a very conservative religious home, there's no fucking way she had her own iTunes account. Her dad could just pull that up, see what she's downloaded, see what she's listening to. Come on now. And also, as someone who used to be very into their religion, who went to a church camp on purpose... Mm-hmm. I never knew anyone who was like, you know what I need right now? You know what I in my veins? <laughs> some Franklin Graham in my ears, filling me with that good news. My dad is a pastor preacher, and even he, like, he's like, all right, just once a week. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's enough. <laughs> that's we enough Franklin Graham. One Franklin Graham a week. We can't get any more uh, into that. Um <laughs> Uh, I could. I, I could cook on Franklin Graham for an entire hour. I, I'm sure you could. Um, and I think one thing I did want to discuss about this film is that, I mean, we're, we're having fun and we're, we're dunking on it a lot, but it is a truly insidious movie. Um, oh, yeah. Because of the way that its messaging is, is portrayed, because it is not it is not aimed at an audience of non-religious people. It is aimed at an audience of, of evangelical people. Right. It is, it is to convince them that, th- that their worldview is, is the one that makes sense and that this is, you know, oh, the world that is out to get them. The movie's just a self fellatio. Like, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, like, how can it I get really down is there and get down on my bad self? And they also talk about Christianity, especially at the end where, like, they have that call to action, texting all your friends, God is not dead. First of all, I could not do that during one song. This would take me hours to go through my contacts and text every single person, God is not 
not dead. And then he's like, oh, you, you text a hundred people. That's a million people. It's literally a, an MLM. It's a multi-level marketing scheme. If you get your five friends to buy my product and they sell it to their five friends, it's like, nah, dude, you run out of people real yeah. fast. Oh, my Lord. Well, also, yeah. like, there are a lot of people that if I texted that to, they would, like, my dad, who, again, pastor, would have no idea what in the world that meant or how to properly respond. <laughs> He'd be like, he would send in a list yeah. and a question mark. <laughs> he would like, text what? me two weeks later and be like, did you hear about the Nationals? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if you guys had people that, you know, if you remember 2014 very well, but, like, there were people on my Facebook friends who would, like, post God's Not Dead or, like, like would po- like people would event like do that and like put put text out about like that and I think that like this this whole movie is like you said Michael it's a, it's a marketing scheme right it is it, it is intended to fulfill the evangelical desire to um, self insulate and to protect oneself um, but also to to grow their you know their intel- not intellectual but like ideological capital and to uh, try to but also try to expand their base because like the whole the whole premise of the film is that this guy Josh he doesn't want to like deny Christ in front of this class this class and I mean that's what that 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 dumb pastor says it's like he's he's like hey you know if if, if you deny God you know you're going to hell um and and the whole the whole evangelical mindset it's not so much in Catholicism Catholicism is more about um, self hatred uh, as opposed <laughs> to uh, hating others um which which is that. Right, you you need to constantly be uh, asking other people, you know, to you trying to convert other people. Like, I mean, evangelical—that's the root of evangelicalism—is trying to trying to speak to other people. And I, I don't know what what you guys have to think about that, but I feel like this movie is is um, you know a, a vehicle for one trying to get you to convert people, and two, when those people are like, "What the fuck?" You you fall back into, "Oh, the world is, is against me, and I have to be only with Christians." Yeah, it definitely also props up the myth of like. That as a Christian, you are just absolutely spectacular. Like, you are a great human being. And that's what, she, like, because we were told that, like, oh, as a Christian, people will be like, well, I want to be like you because you're cool. When, in fact, people are like, you are a buzzkill. <laughs> like, dude, let me pass this freaking class. <laughs> and it, this film, like, accidentally highlights that dichotomy, right? Of, like... Where there's literally a scene where the pastor's like, you're perfect, you were created perfect. And, like, this guy's giving this lady relationship advice, right? And so (laughs) he knew that this professor was an atheist. And I'm not defending him. He was an awful human being. But, like, she knew what she was getting into. And then she literally says, I don't feel like we're evenly yoked. She just said, I'm better than you. Sorry. (laughs) And, like... (laughs) A mean thing to say to someone. She also (laughs) murdered that wine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She took that wine out behind the shed and shot it. And then, yeah. But, like, it's really this obsession with, like, if you are a Christian, you are perfect. You're created in God's image, so you are infallible. But you should also apologize to God for everything you do wrong. And you're just insta forgiven. But everyone else is awful. And that's a lot of things to hold hold all at the same time that seem contradictory. And it could have been a very interesting conversation the movie had with like, well, how do you balance these things with being a Christian in the modern era? Could have been like, like the second Vatican council of like, well, how does this work with, uh, uh, you know, evolution and science? And it said, um, Hey, look, the duck dynasty people are walking by. Let's, let's, let's well, sit over there for a second. And his argument about creating life, not being that simple. Obviously Josh has never tried to make kombucha. It is that simple. <laughs> it is actually that simple. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, well, it it just that the, I need to talk about this, and it might be for thirty five minutes. Do it. Um, <laughs> so I it. sent both of you guys a clip. I do not know if you watched any of it, um, but if any person listening to this, all four of you, have ever seen "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia," there is a famous clip in which Mac disproves evolution. And how he does that by saying that every scientist has been wrong about something, therefore they have been a little bitch. And that is Josh's opening and closing argument.
<laughs> which was science was wrong. Don't be a little bitch. Be a Christian. <laughs> but he doesn't say little bitch because we all know there's a verse in the Bible that doesn't actually exist that says if you curse, you cannot be a Christian and you're going to hell. It also lists the words in every language. It's very crazy. Yeah. Sorry, were you were you taught that? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Oh my God, Michael. Uh. We couldn't say ass. It's in the Bible. <laughs> um, we we were told that men could not have hair that touched their collars. Otherwise, they were being effeminate and they weren't going into heaven. Also, Miss, uh, I think you're beautiful. I wish you didn't have to do that. And dresses have to be a certain length in this southern good Christian household was something yep. we were told a lot. Oh, yep. yeah. No, like I when I went to college, I had I had friends of color and like particularly one of my friends is a Hindu. And like she would be like constantly harassed by these Christian people who would be like, hey, just so you know, you can be a Christian. And she's like, hey, could you maybe fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, it, I love the idea of these, like, white men going, it's terrible that a man is telling you what you can or can't wear. You can't wear that. Yeah, anyway. Well, <laughs> this film, and I think, like, this, like, world, and, you know, apparently there are several of them, has, like, perpetuated that, right? Like, white men really are the end-all, be-all. White men stand for both of Christianity and atheism and any like minority character or other character is a plus one to the action. <laughs> Even the, um, the missionary who comes in in the beginning for a plot reason, I'm sure. Uh, like all he was, was just like an instrument of faith for the pastor or reverend. They switch, which is weird <laughs> um, to lean on. The reverend who looks like, you know, I'm I'm really targeting a very small niche here of people who like reality TV and grew up evangelical. Um, he looks like the man from Sister Wives. And so I just kept waiting for his, his uh, four wives to come out and start bickering about a bed and breakfast. Um, All of my notes about him just call him Reverend, uh, reverend Center Part. So I have no <laughs> idea what his actual name is. Um, I refer to him as Cody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, fun fact, um, his name is Pastor Dave, and uh, I watched a lot of YouTube essays about the God's Not Dead series. Like, he's an integral character into this franchise. Um, I believe in episode three, like, their church gets burned down by, like, somebody who is angry. And I guess the underlying message about it was, like, either <laughs> Black Lives Matter is bad or that you shouldn't protest. Probably both. Uh <laughs> Um, so I don't know where that film is, but I kind of want to see it as long as I don't give them money. Uh, yeah. I, um, I feel like, like, I have the weirdest, like, Sherpa that is leading me through this God's Not Dead universe. Aaron, is, would you describe Pastor Reverend Dave Center Park Cody as, <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, the, um, the Tony Stark of this universe or more of the Samuel L. Jackson character that kind of loops everything together or perhaps even a, a Bruce Banner. Does he get recast later and they just don't address it? Um, hmm, as far as Marvel cinematic parallels go, I think he's more, I think he's more uh, Captain America because he is like the good old boy who doesn't like fully understand what's going on, but he just does his best and sometimes he loses and, and that's just how the world works, but he keeps fighting anyway, despite um, having an ideology that's 70 years old. God, he loves Bucky. <laughs> and he's um, extremely gay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, speaking of extremely gay, oh, good. I really thought <laughs> this film was going to have Melissa Joan Hart in it. Where does she fit in into this grand universe? Because I know she's in it. And I kept waiting for her in her sensible heels and, you know, Republican blonde hair to come out of the woodwork. <laughs> oh, OK. Yes. So Melissa Joan Hart is in this franchise. She is in God's Not Dead 2. Fast and um, Furious. Uh, to, to God, to dead. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's basically about how the ACLU is bad, is my understanding, because, um, God's Not Dead 2 is like, oh, somebody, uh, made a small reference to Jesus in a class, and then they got fired for it, I guess, and then, um, like, the ACLU is, like, really evil in this one, I guess, so that's Wait. where Melissa Joan Hart comes in. 
aren't they undoing their own argument? Like, honestly, the whole argument of film one is, like, don't, like, force your opinion about atheism onto these students. And then a, a teacher does the same with Jesus, and then that's the protagonist. Michael, this might surprise you, but evangelical Christianity is not always ideologically consistent. No, it is not. <laughs> Uh, hey, Michael, I don't know if you remember anything about our childhood. There are a lot of hypocrites. <laughs> <laughs> suck sometimes, unfortunately. We are going to have to watch that one as someone who is very um, passionate about the educational world, uh, studying to be a teacher currently. I'm going to have opinions. <laughs> I mean, we can. I, I mean, if you want, if you can find God's Not Dead too, I am willing to do another discussion about God's Not Dead. <laughs> I uh, think it's on Netflix. I think I it is. Okay. One of them is. is. There is another God's Not Dead on Netflix. Let me pull it up. Um, I almost clicked on it and that would have been bad. <laughs> it would have been really I would have I wouldn't have understood the plot. Yeah. I would have been I mean, talking about all sorts of different things. I think A Light in Darkness is actually number three because that's the one where, where Pastor Dave is important. Um they Yeah, just, that's the one where the church but burns down. Okay. Are we going to have to get a subscription to that uh, Christian? Peter Plitz, which, which <laughs> yeah. this, as it turns out, is a, a sponsor. They were the publishing company for this film. So, oh, of course uh, they were. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We might have to. I don't know where else you can get, find God's Not Dead 2. Sometimes I see it, like, in when we used to go to grocery stores. Like, I would see it in, like, the bargain bin in Walmart. I'd be like, maybe. Maybe today's the day I spend $5 on this film. But I don't hate myself enough just yet. I'm sure it's illegal on Pornhub somewhere. Oh, I, mm, you know, <laughs> we could, we'll see, we'll have to see, let's see, did we hit, did, is there anything else you guys want to, want to talk about, um, th- there, there's just so many egregious bits of this film that, like, yeah. nobody, I mean, even if we did try to summarize it, uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to do it justice, so if, if you are listening, go, I mean, don't watch this film, but if you do <laughs> want to understand this recording, uh, go watch this film, um, um is there anything else you guys want to address? I have just, like, a few bullet points that I I feel the need to go over. Um, (laughs) The fact that they use an Oscar Wilde quote of uh, the rumors of, like, that's very gay. For how homophobic (laughs) this movie is, that's very, 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 very gay. (laughs) I did believe that was a bold move. (laughs) Um. I have seen better fake crying than Amy did out of Real Housewives, so I just think that in the next film we should cast a Real Housewife. I'm sure you could find one. Just ask one of the Dallas women. Um, the most epic line in this film is, who do you want to fail, me or God? <laughs> oh my God. I lost my shit. I also re- I'm surprised you went with that line instead of, God wants someone to defend him. God was sort of defensive. Because uh, that one just sent me. Um, and I've also got that Muslim girl's motor running, apparently. Yeah, she was extremely <laughs> horny for that shit. Yeah. Um, my favorite line was, it's time for the help to depart, said by Radisson's <laughs> girlfriend. Um, I <laughs> applauded. As if she was some sort of persecuted, like, pers- person being being exploited but i mean she was exploited because it is set up that she was like in his classroom like she's a student that has started dating him um and like he yeah. he started dating her after the midterm so while she was still in his class which is so fucked up um, the power dynamic there was so like so much to unpack that they gave us and yeah. so much wrong with their relationship that the difference in religion was like Number eight. It's not, it's not even the worst part. No, no. There's so much other shit going on. Um, but yeah, g- he did for- ask for forgiveness while his uh, his ribs were crushed. Yeah, well, so yeah, I'm still with blood, so as l- he's still going to heaven, which is good. Um, don't forget the pastor laid the truth down. Uh, lying is not good. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, he's like, you're gonna lie to me. I'm a pastor. I, I love the car. Sal- car salesman kicked ass though. He, was awesome. he did. Yeah. Is that the same car? No. Ah, so, I, so. I'm surprised. Uh-huh. Does he show up again, Aaron? I hope so. We're gonna find out, I suppose. <laughs> We're gonna find out. <laughs> Have you noticed that they only know one type of wine in this film? What? They said the word Merlot enough that if I made <laughs> that part of a drinking game. 
No, yeah, you can only you have you have to have a separate glass of Merlot for whenever they say the word, and you'll just crush the whole bottle. The color of the car, the wine they were drinking, that you know, that terrible Christian girl ruined. Oh my god! Yeah. She did kill uh, that wine, though. She did that wine. She like yeah. <laughs> she just left it. She's like, yeah, I left it in my trunk. For a day. For a day. Yeah, that's, yeah, and then all the angry professors were like, wow, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Well, they weren't even, I like, love. digging into her, they are roasting the wine, and then suddenly yeah, was just like, that's my contribution, like, well, like, I hey, was listen, like, we all drank bad wine, it's fine. Well, I just thought, did you make this wine, like, why are you so in your feelings over a bottle of wine you picked up at the Whole Foods? Well, it's because her, she, she's yoked differently, Michael. Oh, <laughs> I do have one important question to ask you guys, because um, it did. I, I, I am converted from this movie. Uh, are you, would you guys like to hear the, the good news? Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> the the yeah, good no. news of Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord and uh, Savior. <laughs> I think I've heard enough from this film. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I don't know. I mean, we could probably go on dunking on it, but I don't know if that would serve a purpose. I I feel like we got all of our good our good points out. Um, I, I guess I would just end on like my major problem with this film is that uh, the problem that I have with a lot of um, performatively uh, religious people, which is that that the, it is only by faith through through people are, that people are saved, and not by like any sort of material assistance, like the fact that. The, the girl, they're like, oh, hey, it's okay that you're a Christian. Anyway, sorry about you being homeless. Or like the tiny... Yeah. That the millionaire sent you a text yeah. message. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I do want to pose the question. Like, I just think it's an interesting thought experiment. If you were in... <laughs> if you were in charge of, like, making this movie's message something that actually you know, is one that's positive and is not, you know, racist, sexist, xenophobic. And you were trying to, like, actually spread the message. How would, what would you change? That's such a good question. Um, do we, do, can I change as much as I want or one aspect? <laughs> as much as you want, but, like, like, hit me with, like, good bullet points, because I've been thinking about this. Ooh, do you want to, like, lead us off to give us, like, a little bit of time to formulate Sure. So my thoughts were that, number one, instead of this whole, like, arguing that God is for sure alive, why didn't he argue about, like, the simple fact that the whole point of faith is not knowing something? And, like, I just think this movie kept getting close to, like, moments where I was like, oh, are we going places? And then would, like, jump off the tracks and derail and go so far from it that I just found it interesting thinking like what changed about this could actually be thought provoking and interesting rather than, you know, worth an hour of dunking. Yeah. I think that's, that's such a good point because you're, you're right. This with, with a a competent editor, this is a completely different and like kind, like an okay movie to show to like uh, a youth group. Like, um, I, I, so, you know, like I mean, this this isn't a short movie either. Like it's almost two hours long. Um, so there there is definitely if you cut out maybe you know the twenty minutes of racism, sexism, and xenophobia, you you could get a ninety minute film where where you don't oh, have. I thought for sure you were gonna say fifteen minutes. Okay, <laughs> listen, listen, nice we got little, we still gotta make money. Listen, <laughs> nice little commercial short that goes in front of a Disney movie. Uh, I think I. I I think what we could do, there is a different universe where Radisson is not a rabid, like, uh, like evil atheist, and where he's just, like, a philosophy, like, he is he is an agnostic, he goes down that path, and he's like, um, you know, I, I don't, uh, like, he, he, or, like, he's just teaching Nietzsche, and he's like, hey, would, would somebody who, who is passionate about this like to, you know, do this project for extra credit, or, or something, and, like, they, they actually, like, build the dialogue, and, like, it's not just, like, this antagonistic relationship, it is, you know, hey, um, we can we can all have a dialogue about like what it means to actually have have faith as opposed to like you know us versus them like sh- and try to show that that the the world of faith like you said Michael it's not about you know knowing for certain it is about you know shades of gray where you try try to find something that where you do find meaning in something that is not necessarily concrete but that doesn't necessarily diminish its value either. Yeah, I think that like that 
the shades of gray is like a very important aspect of of Christian media that is it just doesn't exist like <laughs> like it just yeah. doesn't like I've never maybe I'm looking in the wrong areas but like it, I've never viewed any Christian medium where I'm like that was very in the middle it was subtle <laughs> it is so subtle I that's mean, the religious rights fault guys I gotta I mean, say yeah. yeah no that's yeah maybe maybe a hundred years ago this would have been a different conversation if I could have changed yeah. one like I just want one change to this goddamn movie, and that's somebody who knows how people talk to write the dialogue. <laughs> Please. Like, just, really if, if you want a how not to write a conversation between two individuals, please go to YouTube and look up the conversation between Josh and his girlfriend when she breaks up with him. Because that is a interaction that should have been 30 seconds, and it is like seven minutes. No. It's and like, terrible. <laughs> no, there's there's a problem in this film with people, like, have like half-breaking up with people, and then, like, coming back to, like, fucking drive the final nail in the coffin. Like, they can't... She does break up with him three times. Like, yeah. every time I was like, oh, they broke up, and then she gave him a hug, and I'm like... What? what? <laughs> yeah, no, because, like, well, you're saying, the dialogue does not support <laughs> what the meeting is at all. No. Like, it's ridiculous. Or they'll do the well, there's Tommy no... Wiseau. Oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's, there's no brevity to anything in this movie. Like, I, one of my less serious notes was that the final song is 25 minutes. Like, <laughs> I mean, this the is final... just a promo for you at that point. <laughs> yeah. The, like, it's this so felt long. like newsboys propaganda, not Christian propaganda. Like, I, I, suddenly found myself wearing a Newsboys shirt at the end of it. And I don't even know what that would look like. Yeah, I just had the Jars of Clay hat. I was like, how did I get this? <laughs> I suddenly was online ordering tickets. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, Do the Newsboys show up in the future, Aaron? I, I really hope so. I mean, this song was written for this movie, um, like, as as part of a promotional, like, like push so i don't i don't know i mean i have to assume because like all the i don't know if you guys did any deep dives but like the music that everyone listens to in this film are is by christian artists like even the atheist reporter mm -hmm. she's listening to a christian pop pump band while she's doing her <laughs> typing of course like, <laughs> it's it's great um i recognize the song like i found it so great Oh, oh so yeah, re-traumatizing. michael were you suddenly like driving to cold pepper with our parents in the back seat I suddenly was like, I had all these recovered memories. <laughs> uh, it was actually incredible. Because in I the worst I've, possible way. I've heard the God's Not Dead song about a quadrillion times. Oh my god! <laughs> and for eight billion dollars, I could not tell you the lyric other than the like chorus. Uh, yeah, they, no, I mean, it doesn't exist outside the chorus, as far as, like, I know. <laughs> no. It's like one of those, as soon as you look away, it deletes from your brain. It's just gone, yeah. Um, this is, this was fun, uh, gentlemen. Uh, I'm glad that I finally got to talk about my favorite evangelical franchise, um, <laughs> with some real live evangelicals. Um, we, we should give it a, a um, recovering. Yeah, yeah. Recovering, yes. Uh, I, I'm gonna yes. give this... This movie, um, uh, three and a half crosses. I'm gonna give it two upside down crosses. Uh, okay. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> because I feel like this movie is slightly cursed um, <laughs> between everything that happened. It was just too much. And uh, the dialogue, I think the only explanation is the possession. So two upside down crosses. Uh, Satan's more charismatic than that. I mean, honestly, <laughs> fair, fair. Um, as as a former Catholic, I'm actually going to use the Stations of the Cross. Uh, I will use I will give it the seventh station, which is Jesus Falls the second time, because <laughs> it is um, kind of a blunder. But also it doesn't occur. It doesn't have enough thematic residence to occur a third time. Um, and it it just completely botches the, the meaning and message. It follows uh, the, the stand, the, the set in stone comedy rule of twos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you just repeat a joke, it's still just as funny. All right. Well, I'll see if I can salvage this audio and make something listenable. I can't. I can't guarantee that that anyone will hear this outside of us, but we'll see. I'm sending it to every person I know. I'm going to send this followed up with "God is not dead." (laughs) If you text that to me, I'm blocking you.